Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy, Nermudon, and I'll be doing a gameplay commentary over some Call of Duty Black Ops 2. For this particular installment, I'm going to be talking about the pros of Call of Duty Black Ops 2. I know it can be a little far-fetched sometimes, I know the game can be very aggravating and frustrating at moments, but I think we can all agree that Call of Duty, or at least particular Call of Duties, do one thing good. They always have one thing, or one characteristic, that is uh, defining to their existence, and I think that's why we keep coming back. So, I'm going to talk about a few things, as in the franchise and or the particular Call of Duty Black Ops 2, that I found to be most impressive, and or in the innovation side of it. So, to really jump off, guys, many of us know Call of Duty runs on 60 frames per second. But, it's a pretty big deal. A lot of us will look at it and go, okay, it's a characteristic that keeps coming back every year, no big deal, we imagine it'll always be there. But if you guys could imagine playing a game on 30 frames per second, such as Battlefield 3 on console, it's a pretty big leap. It's a pretty big importance to have 60 frames per second in your game, and it's kind of an important characteristic. That's why I think so many of us come to Call of Duty. It's because it's fast-paced, it's smooth, and it has all this stuff that, well, most of us want. You know, you want to get into the action quickly, you want to be able to move quickly, and you want to have that ability to lock onto targets and not feel sluggish. Well, Call of Duty does very good at that. That's kind of what its uh, main selling point is for. Another thing that I found that I've been looking into and really just digesting the Call of Duty uh, formula is that the maps are a little bit more interactive. Every year we get a little bit more interactive in one way or another. May that be particular doors opening up, may that be crates just spinning around the map and changing the lines of sight. Um, you know, just lots of different things that make the game more enjoyable. Now, does this make it a huge difference? Does this really add any definitive, I guess, position to the map or anything? Well, not exactly, but it can add more depth to it. It can make it a little bit more tactical. It's uh, obviously something to take into account. You know, having innovation in that side of it is not a bad thing. It's always a nice thing to have different things that are outside of the player's control to actually happen during the map. Obviously, you don't want to get smashed by some doors or a crate or something. But it's a nice thing to have a few maps that do have a little bit of a different characteristic to them, maybe have a little bit more background story, and there is situations that can lead to your death if you're not uh, paying attention. So I guess that's kind of something that I appreciate that they've been introducing into their games. Another thing to really jump into is the color and design of Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Obviously, Treyarch has taken a big note from the community that we want color. We want color and we don't want to have any more gray maps. We don't want this black and white feel to it anymore. So with this particular installment, they added a lot of color to it. They made it a little bit more colorful and obviously it looks a little bit more brightening and you know they added some highlights and stuff like that to really draw the attention of the community. I think they did a good job with this, though in my defense I would say that you know I could understand why in the World at War series that they were doing also in Black Ops 1, why they did such a grayscale kind of layout. You know, the color was important, but obviously those are very touchy times. You know, a lot of people will say, well, this particular war, we shouldn't have been there. We shouldn't have been fighting for this particular reason. But you also got to look at it and say innocent lives did die during those wars. We obviously want to give recognition to the troops that had that uh, particular, I guess, instance to have to be deployed there. So I guess that's how I look at it. Maybe not everybody looks at it in that format. Of course, you guys will differ. Of course, you guys will add things to this list. And I imagine you guys will agree and or disagree on centralized matters. That's to be expected. That's why everybody has, you know, point of view. That's why your perception is different than somebody else's. Another thing to take into account, I talked about the color. You know, it's nice to have that. But it's also nice to see different designs. We don't want to see linear maps. We don't want to see three traffic maps where we know where the other team's going to go. It's nice to have different lines of sight. You want to sit up in this building? Well, you got to realize that position probably has a counter that you're probably not aware of. Or maybe that spot can easily be destroyed by somebody using a sniper rifle. You know, it's nice to be able to look at different positions, different lines of sight. Obviously, have the maps flow very smoothly. You don't want to have any lines of uh, sight or anything that can simply just be locked down by one player. That would not make the game fun, and it would become very aggravating in many accounts. Obviously, the game's not perfect, but it's nice to look at it in a positive manner and realize that there are things in the game that do make it fun, that do make it energetic, that do add a different experience that we're not commonly associated with when we play in a multiplayer game. It draws you in for a particular reason, and those maps that you like so much, well, what is it that makes that map so enjoyable? Is it the color scheme? Is it that it's very balanced? It's really easy to spawn kill? Obviously, that's up to you guys. Obviously, you guys all play in a different way. Some of you are objective-based players. Some of you are kill-death players like myself. Some of you are both. You know, it's just all different. Maybe some of you guys are trick shotters and you don't really care to help the team. I don't know. Whatever you're trying to do. Maybe you're trying to get that particular no-scope 360 off a building. Maybe that's going to be in your next installment of your montage. I don't know. Obviously, Call of Duty opens the gate to a lot of players and a lot of different playstyles 
that are commonly associated with the multiplayer side of it. Another thing to take into account, guys, is that customization is a very important part. Maybe you want to put all this stuff on your sniper rifle. You would like to have, you know, a couple of scopes. Maybe you want that laser sight to increase your chances of getting that 360 no scope. Maybe you want to have the ability to really customize your character in the sense that you can add camouflage to his suiting. Maybe he changes a different color or has a different, I guess, um, you know, design and or just appearance when you use particular perks like we saw in Black Ops 1. Unfortunately, that did not transfer to the second installment, but it's something to take into account. You know, the franchise does evolve. It does change. Obviously, it changes for the better every year. It's just hard to see that with so many frustrations that we commonly have, and myself included. I'm not going to try to play this off. I get pissed every year with the Call of Duty franchise, but there are good things that come with it. It's nice to see innovation still even when we're this far into the series to the point where they can still change things. Also, you guys have the ability to put camos on your weapons, followed by your emblem if you so choose to. The emblem editor was a very notorious thing in the first installment, and I'm glad they brought it back in number two. Obviously, I wish the amount of penises on my screen would decrease, but some people like to get very detailed in that artifact. I'm not sure why, but I guess everybody can imagine that their schlong is uh, up to fitting. With that in mind, guys, obviously you can place your emblem onto your weapon, you can showcase it to the world, followed by your clan tag, and if you have a particular clan that you're really proud of, you think they're really cool guys and girls, that's awesome. Also, maybe if you want to troll a couple of the bigger YouTubers, if you beat them, you can have a particular notion on your clan tag, maybe you like to follow particular peoples, that's up to you. Obviously, you have the freedom at will to do as you so wish, and it gives you that freedom to use that hopefully in a positive manner, but that's completely up to you guys, again, that's perception. Something that I've really been looking forward to, and I was really pleased when they did the 10-point system. I know it's hit or miss. Sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't. But I like the perk stack. I like to have, you know, six, five perks sometimes. I like to run around and know that I'm a one-man army sometimes. Obviously, there are weapons in Black Ops 2 that do not need attachments. They're just really balanced, and they're really good. Then again, there are weapons that need a lot of attachments, and it's nice to have a wide variety of things to pick from, but it's also nice to have the ability to pick out different things. Maybe you want to go really perk-heavy this particular game. Maybe you want to be a you know, one-man army, and you want to run explosives, and you want to piss the other team off. You have the ability to do that, but I don't really commonly see that. I don't see a lot of people abusing that kind of stuff, so it's nice to at least decrease the amount of explosives on the map. I don't really see a whole lot of people using just overkill explosives, but I imagine it still happens. I mean, it's still the Call of Duty franchise, and stuff will continually happen. It's to be expected. Obviously, within this new, new listings, we do have new kill streaks, score streaks, stuff like that, just basically reskin to a certain degree, but I'm still impressed. You know, it's a futuristic title. It uh, plays, I guess, a futuristic kind of esh feel to it. But it's nice to still see things that they're imagining, they're bringing in realistic outputs, they're still using common things that were associated with when we played a multiplayer game. And I guess from that standpoint, guys, I guess the graphics is always the most important in many people's aspect. Of course, not everybody will agree with this, but in my opinion, I like to look at games that look beautiful, and I like to see innovation at the highest degree. Black Ops 2 looks better, but again, there are games that do look better in different aspects, but you gotta hit or miss. Do you want the frame rate, or do you want just beautiful maps that don't play as great? That's up to you guys. Again, that is a perception, and how you guys view that is completely up to you. Obviously, we're talking about consoles on this PC. I am aware that you guys can run pretty much whatever you want, but I do think Black Ops 2 did a good job, guys. I would love to know what you guys think. Are you guys for the comments that I gave? Did I miss a few things? Obviously, I've thought pretty hard about this, but... There are negatives, and maybe I'll make a video discussing that if you guys request it, but when it comes down to the main gist of it, guys, this will be NMO, and I'm going to be signing off, guys. Peace.